The five most devastating events in the universe. The world broadly may appear to be a calm place. If we pay attention to everything that happens outside of it, we can see that, in reality, it is all about chaos. When we think of astronomical events such as star collisions, we tend to associate them with destruction. However, we must remember that the origin of the planet where we live was also violent. The curiosity to understand how this could happen led humanity to discover that heavy elements are formed inside the stars in cataclysmic processes, such as the explosion of a supernova, where these elements are dispersed throughout the universe, giving rise to the formation of other celestial bodies and even life. Yes, the iron that forms when a star dies is essential constituents of our planet. This is when the phrase, we are made of star stuff, does not sound as bad as it seems. But not all stars can do this. Some less massive ones, like the Sun, die as the nuclear reactions within them die out, and they contract to become white dwarfs. Another way of saying this is that because of their mass, they cannot sustain very high temperatures in their interiors to give rise to heavier and heavier elements to keep the nuclear reactions going. In 1946, Fred Hoyle showed that atoms fuse at high temperatures. Thus, in the interior of stars, hydrogen atoms can form helium atoms in nuclear fission processes. Helium atoms can form nitrogen or carbon atoms and so on, up to heavier elements such as iron. It is impossible to generate elements heavier than iron because this requires large amounts of energy. At this point, the star collapses and a supernova is generated. But why can an event release so much energy and give rise to the formation of elements as heavy as lead, other celestial bodies, and even life? At the end of this video, you will know the answer. Scientists dedicated to monitoring and mapping the sky in the highest energy gamma radiation use tanks with pure water to detect cosmic rays by measuring gamma rays coming from space. In the words of Alberto Caraminana, a researcher at the HAWC Observatory, in the high-altitude water, Cherenkov cosmic rays are made of particles with vast amounts of energy. The typical energy of a cosmic ray is a million, million times greater than the energy of the molecules generated at the CERN particle accelerator. And the highest energy cosmic rays have millions of times more energy than typical cosmic rays. Gamma rays are high-frequency electromagnetic radiation. They are produced when subatomic particles, such as protons or electrons, are accelerated in extreme environments, usually associated with violent events, and interact with matter and radiation fields. This radiation travels across the universe to other galaxies. If we connect all this so far, if a cosmic ray source, such as the supernova, accelerates particles to high energies, it will produce gamma rays. If those gamma rays are detected, we will be detecting cosmic ray sources. Using this knowledge, we have detected violent events that occurred in the universe. Yes, those that are barely visible from our position. Number 5. Solar Bursts We begin the maximum solar time, where we feel that the sun melts us, but our star is not as destructive as we think. The energy released in solar storms is equivalent to tens of millions of times the Hiroshima bomb. This energy heats the plasma to several million degrees Celsius, and as a consequence, a bombardment of particles such as protons and electrons is thrown out at speeds close to the speed of light. It is common to see pictures of stars with spots in which intense magnetic fields emerge from their surface towards the outermost layer. This bombardment generates gamma rays known as GRBs. Usually this type of ray is associated with very energetic explosions that can last from nanoseconds to an hour, after which rays of other frequencies such as X-rays or ultraviolet radiation are emitted. A typical event generates in seconds what the Sun has generated in its entire evolutionary history, that is, in 10,000 million years. It has also been proposed that GRBs originated in supernovae or kilonovae. Number 4. Supernova A supernova is an enormous explosion that humans have ever contemplated. Five solar masses are enough for them to originate. There are two types. We know that type 1 supernovae occur when a star reaches the end of its life. If we go into detail, it is essential to know that the stars maintain a balance between gravity that tries to compact them and the physiological reactions inside them and exert pressure on the outside. When there is no more material to sustain these reactions, 
gravity plays its role and compresses the star in seconds. Imagine a lump of sugar being crushed by a hammer. The first supernova visible to the human eye was SN1987A, after the astronomer Johannes Kepler observed one in 1604. It was so named because it was observed in early 1987. It is considered one of the most intense explosions ever detected since the invention of the telescope 400 years ago, and it is also one of the most studied. This supernova is located in the Large Magellanic Cloud, 165,000 light years from Earth in the Tarantula Nebula. The stellar dust generated in the supernova makes it impossible to see what is inside. However, scientists believe that a neutron star is inside, about to form a black hole. These stars are the most exotic and peculiar. They are about the same size as a comet, but their mass can reach two times the mass of the Sun, which makes them too dense. They can reach densities of a billion tons per cubic centimeter. To give us an idea, the Hiroshima bomb had an explosive power of 16 kilotons, and SN1987A would be equivalent to a quintillion atomic bombs. Type II supernovae occur in systems where two stars orbit each other, and at least one of them is a white dwarf. If the latter collides with another or extracts matter from a neighboring star, it destabilizes and explodes. Did you know that the Crab Nebula is known as the SN1054 event? In 1054, what Chinese astronomers called a guest star appeared since it could be seen with the naked eye for 23 days and 650 nights in the sky. The remains of this Type II supernova form the gigantic cloud of gases that we know, extending over a distance of about 13 light years. That is a little more than 15 million times the distance between the Sun and the Earth. One of the central stars of this system corresponds to a pulsar, so-called because it emits pulses of radiation in synchrony with its rotation. It is known as PSR 0531 plus 121 and rotates with a period of only 0.033 seconds. Number 4. Plarians Also called Pulsar Wind Nebula, it is a type of supernova remnant powered by the winds generated by the central pulsar of the system, such as its power source, which is located at the center and is a source of X-rays and gamma rays. The Crab Nebula is a prototype of these. The pulsar wind is composed of plasma accelerated to relativistic velocities by powerful magnetic fields generated by the pulsar spins, even more potent than those interacting with the Earth. Plarians can maintain this behavior for milliseconds or conversely for hundreds or thousands of years. It is estimated that the pressures that favor the formation of a plarian are maintained for about 15,000 years. The energy begins to dissipate depending on the speed at which the pulsar loses energy. In summary, plarians result from the interaction of a pulsar with the surrounding medium. For this reason, they are used to study the pulsar and the surrounding environment indirectly. Number 3. Kilonova This event occurs when two neutron stars or a neutron star and a black hole collide, releasing large amounts of energy and matter into the universe. The LIGO Scientific Collaboration LSC, is a group of scientists who use gravitational waves as a tool for astronomical discovery especially for detecting black holes. It is through this that the kilonova GW170817 was detected. In 2017, the first gravitational wave signal was detected, coinciding with the detection of gamma rays, which led to the conclusion that it was not a black hole, but the collision of two neutron stars. Later, the event was observed in Chile, and it was determined that the flash came from a distance of 130 million light years from Earth. The event was dubbed a kilonova because it involved energies about a thousand times greater than a supernova. More than 70 observatories worldwide followed the event for more than two weeks at all wavelengths, i.e. about 4,000 astronomers were studying the same object at the same time. But why at all wavelengths? This star was an unprecedented event for astronomers because within 24 hours after the neutron star merger, radioactive decay of the heavy elements was observed in the visible and UV spectrum. One week later, after the brightness had dimmed, the same was observed in the X-ray range. Two weeks later, the ejection of the matter was observed as a jet of energy in the radio emission range. Number 2. Black Hole Collisions a black hole is created when an extremely massive star dies. It must have at least 10 solar masses to give rise to one, 
otherwise a neutron star is created. In this place, LIGO takes importance since its efforts to detect gravitational waves generated by black holes led to observing for the first time, in conjunction with the Virgo project, the collision of two black holes on May 21, 2019. According to the data obtained more than 7 billion years ago, two black holes of 85 and 66 solar masses collided and merged, sending gravitational waves across the universe. It is estimated that the energy released in this event is like having detonated a million atomic bombs per second since the creation of the universe. The object created in this collision has 142 solar masses. The initial black holes are considered a mystery because the scientific community cannot understand how a massive object more significant than the theorized limit can exist. The theory says that as a star approaches 60 or 130 solar masses, it simply eradicates itself, thus preventing the formation of another celestial object such as a black hole. However, the team that detected the gravitational waves proposes that at least one of these holes formed from two smaller ones. On the other hand, it was possible to form a theorem proposed by Hawking in 1971, which states that the area of the event horizon of the final hole must not be larger than the total area of the event horizon of the two central black holes separately. Unfortunately, Hawking has not been able to see the results of his work. Number 1. Quasar Merger According to Contact, a quasar is a highly luminous galactic nucleus with a supermassive black hole in its interior, surrounded by a gaseous accretion disk. As the gas falls towards the hole, a large amount of energy is released in radiation observable across the electromagnetic spectrum. Quasars often overshadow the galaxies in which they are located because they are the brightest sources in the entire universe. The outflow of gases from quasars can reach one-fifth the speed of light, but this is not the most impressive thing. For example, the quasar J0313-1806 has a black hole that ingests 25 suns per year. In addition, the galaxy in which this quasar is located forms new stars 200 times faster than the Milky Way. Now that we are clear about what a single quasar represents, imagine a collision between two of them. In 2010, a pair of quasars located about 4.6 billion light years apart, but separated in the sky by only 70,000 light years, was first captured in an SDSS J1254 plus 0846. As quasars are a more prominent representative than the galaxies that contain them, it is said the two galaxies merged in this merger. Last, not listed, but not less important, we find the Big Bang. According to the theory, 13.8 billion years ago originated this incredible explosion that was responsible for the creation from nothing of everything we know today. However, several scientists refute the idea that it is an explosion but rather the expansion of the universe. To end this violent journey, we will answer the question at the beginning. How is it possible that an explosion of these dimensions can possibly enhance life? The answer is that stellar systems with a more significant amount of heavy elements are more likely to form planets. By increasing their number, there are more options than some have the optimal conditions to host life.